Today we are diving into the luxurious world of fragrances that exude opulence and refinement. If you ever wondered what type of fragrances uh, exude this sheer extravagance and unmistakable uh, sophistication, so you are in for a treat. Hi everyone, I'm Joe Lima from Scented Moments channel where I help you to discover the amazing world of perfumery. So I have here 12 fragrances, 6 designers and 6 niche fragrances that smell expensive. Now I will not be ranking uh, this, uh, this video, uh, but be sure that each one of these perfumes smell super expensive, rich, opulent, you name it. Now let's start off from the designer side of things. The first fragrance is from the house of Gucci and this one is Gucci Intense Wood. I absolutely love this one. This is my favorite mainstream wood fragrance. Um, this goes into the realm of Nazomatos Black Afghano, but in my opinion, this is more sophisticated. This is more elegant than Black Afghano. Black Afghano is very loud, big, full on resinous scent, quite smoky. Oh, this one is balsamic. It's a bit fresher, a bit more aromatic, spicy with incense. I don't know if this has real oud, but definitely has like a dark woodsy accords in here. Absolutely love this one. This, this one is amazing. It, this exudes sophistication and it's long lasting. It's really, in terms of performance, is amazing. You will not be disappointed, at least not in my experience. Uh, Gucci Intense Oud is fantastic. Please do try this one if you can. Uh, again, for me, it's my favorite main, mainstream designer wood scent. Next fragrance, this is from House of Tom Ford, of course, but it's from the Signature Collection. And this one is none other than Ombre Leather. Absolutely love this bottle. Uh, so this is the Eau de Parfum. I do prefer the Eau de Parfum than the Parfum. Uh, I think this one is more sophisticated and this is still very intense uh so this is like a i would say like a lighter version of tuscan leather like a more elegant version of tuscan leather uh, because this also has that fruity raspberry that tuscan leather has but it's a bit more um not as intense as in tuscan leather and also the they are not listing, Tom Ford is not listing like raspberry as an official accord, but you definitely do detect some fruitiness in here. Then of course, this is balanced with florals. So this has jasmine in here as well. So it's a bit indolic, but the leather is amazing. It's, it really smells like a, fr a brand new black leather jacket. Oh man, it's so sophisticated. I absolutely love this. It's one of the most sophisticated leather perfumes. Love this one. This is very popular for a reason. Uh, great performance. Um, and really, it's one of the finest leather fragrances that you can find, especially in the mainstream designer world. Ombre Leather by Tom Ford. The next fragrance, this is from the house of Guerlain. And this one is Yiki. Eau de Parfum in the old B bottle presentation, which I absolutely love. Uh, now this comes in the bottle's uh, shape of Mitsuko, still available in both concentrations Eau de Toilette and Eau de Parfum. Absolutely love this one. This was released, firstly released in the Eau de Toilette concentration in 1889. Yes, this is quite old, created by Aimé Guerlain which is considered to be the father of modern perfumery. Uh, Yiki is, it smells like old money, but it's, and it's so damn good. I mean, seriously, the Yiki, it's that type of perfume that you need to experience at least once in your life. So this one, Yiki has a lot of notes. This is very complex, but for me, what I get is like citruses with lavender, civet, it's quite animalic with patchouli, vanilla, rose. So you have the Guerlainade uh, and Yiki, of course. The Guerlainade is basically the DNA of Guerlain, which is present in 
all of their perfumes. So you have the vanilla, the rose, um, and the citruses. So that's like the, the Gachlanade. And this one unmistakably has the Gachlanade in here. Uh, so you have the vanilla and you also have resins like frankincense, benzoin. So this is a very complex perfume citrusy animalic with patchouli with vanilla with resins it's so rich so expensive smelling perfume and again it smells like old money um this for me is strictly unisex if not even more masculine because of the animalic quality that it's quite present in here i really urge you to try this one if you can yiki by Guerlain. if you want to smell like old money Check this one out. Yeah, the fragrance, it's from the house of Christian Dior and it is none other than Dior Homme. The original, not 2020, the original Dior Homme. This is the version from 2011, uh, reformulated by Francois de Machy, which was the in-house perfumeur of Christian Dior back then. Um, but this was originally created by Olivier Pouge. Uh, so this is, one of my all-time favorite fragrances. This is one of the best fragrances created in the 21st century, in my opinion. Uh, groundbreaking, released, firstly released in 2005. Groundbreaking. Uh, this is iris, cacao, a musk, a bit of suede. It's to die for. This, for me, it smells rich. It smells expensive. And quite honestly, even the, the flankers, could be featured in here, like the Dior Mintons, the Dior Parfum could also be featured in this video. I'm just featuring the original because, well, it's because of the original that the flankers were released and were created. Um, but I, and I absolutely love this one. This is very versatile, signature scent worthy. For me, this, if I could have only one fragrance for life, it would be this one, Dior Homme. This is the reason why uh, I love Iris. Um, I mean, quite honestly, this is one of the reasons why I love perfumery. It's Dior Homme, the original. Please do try this one if you have yet to. Next fragrance, this is from the house of Hermes and this one is Roquebar. This one right here, and this is very underrated. I, I don't see a lot of people talking about this fragrance anymore. And this was released in 1998 created by, uh, by Gilles Romé, Jean-Claude Elena, and uh, Bernard Bourgeois. This is one of the finest perfumes from Hermes. Um, so this has, this for me is like a, a citrusy, spicy with cardamom, piney, leathery scent with a bit of a green nuance in here. Um, it's amazing. Uh, and I love how this twists and turns. So again, it, the initial blast is like a full-on citrusy, spicy uh, perfume. Uh, especially the spiciness, more focused in cardamom. And I absolutely love, love cardamom. And then this develops into a very piney, like clary sage, cypress, fir, uh, balsam uh, perfume. Like very piney, very foresty. Uh, it has a mysterious touch in here with a hint of a leather accord absolutely love this one this exudes elegance and sophistication this is like fall in a bottle or and even holidays in a bottle because of the piney qualities in here but this is very sophisticated you don't have like any uh, sweet touches in here sweet edges no this is a dry uh, aromatic spicy woody perfume with a, a leathery uh, nuance Love, love this one. Again, exudes elegance and sophistication. Check this one out if you have yet to. And actually, the lasting power, is, it's also quite good. It's Roquebar by Hermes. And last, but by no means least, from the designer side of things, this is from the house of Chanel. Of course, Chanel needed to be featured. Uh, and it's not an exclusive. This is from their mainstream collection. This is none other than Egoist. Egoist for me, it's my favorite uh, Chanel fragrance market for men. I uh, absolutely love this. Uh, created by uh, Jacques Pouge in 1990. Uh, this is a very spicy floral sandalwood perfume. The florals in here are carnation and rose, which can be challenging, especially the carnation. But this for me is one of the most 
elegant, sophisticated perfumes ever created with a great lasting power also. Very spicy, very dry. The sandalwood here is amazing. And I actually already, I tried the vintage. This is the new formulation. I mean, I already have this one for a couple of years now, but I already tried the vintage formulation. Oh man, wow. The sandalwood, it's super creamy here. It's more dry and spicy in the vintage. It's, it's more creamy and it's also very prominent. I absolutely loved the, the vintage formulation of Egoist. I think this was even the 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 first bottle ever of egoist was from uh, 1989 and this was originally originally called bois noir if i'm not mistaken um but I, the marketing of egoist in general was really didn't didn't work let's say it didn't really work for chanel unfortunately but it's we are really fortunate to still be able to try and buy egoist because this is really a work of art very spicy the carnation here really gives a very gentlemanly touch also with the rose uh the rose always gives like a very elegant uh, smooth and uh, delicate touch to the perfume but this is very masculine although you have like these floral notes in here but this is very masculine in my opinion again exudes exudes elegance um check this one out great performance also very complex very unique in my opinion it's egoist by chanel now let's talk about niche fragrances and the first niche fragrance that i have here is from house of profumo broma and this one is aqua di sale absolutely love this one this is one of my all-time favorite fragrances and profumo broma is my favorite uh, fragrance brand overall. Aqua di Sale. This is an aquatic. This is the best aquatic fragrance. This is the most natural smelling, the most realistic aquatic, and the most long lasting aquatic fragrance that I ever tried. Why this is featuring here? Because this really gives me like expensive vibes. Let me explain. <laughs> this might be weird, but every time I smell this, oh man. First of all, this is incredibly sexy. For an aquatic, I love like the saltiness. This is very salty aquatic with cedar wood. Super sexy. And it gives like uh, also like a musky feeling to it. Uh, and this gives me vibes of being on a yacht with a linen shirt at the Amalfi Coast enjoying life. That's why I'm featuring it here. It's amazing it really gives like expensive summer holidays uh it's aqua di sale i absolutely love this one very sexy again i can't stress it enough great performance it's it's really the best aquatic fragrance if you really want to have one or even try one this is the only one you need it's aqua di sale by profumo broma Next fragrance, this is from House of Ramon Monegal, and this one is Alhambra Oud. This one right here, and I love this bottle presentation. This is from the Don't Touch My Oud collection, which I absolutely love. Uh, I love this Oud collection. I love Oud in general, and this Oud collection is so masterfully done. Uh, so, and Alhambra Oud is my favorite rose Oud perfume. I think it's, for me again, it's the best rose uh, oud perfume that you can buy because the oud it's like it's really natural smelling oud uh it has also like a chocolatey edge into it and the rose is that uh, jammy rose man but it's so smooth nothing here is scratchy it feels natural all of this perfume feels natural actually um the rose used in here it's very similar to the one that it's used in flamenco also from Pramo Monegal, which has that fruity raspberry and i kind of see that in here like this type of rose like the jamminess comes from like this like raspberry fruit which i absolutely love uh and this fragrance is amazing this is intense this is rich this really smells expensive and really i mean really opulent i absolutely love this one oud in general is an opulent note uh, and I love it because of that. 
And then of course you have some woods that are more animalic than others. Uh, this one is not that animalic. This, this type of wood, it's more uh, like a um, chocolatey resinous wood. Dark, yes, mysterious, yes, but it's not funky. At least it doesn't have like a funky edge, not to my nose at least. But I absolutely love this one. Again, the best rose wood fragrance in the market for me, in my opinion, of course, is Alhambra Oud by uh, Ramon Monegal. Talking about oud, the next fragrance, this is from House of Sergio from the Oud Stars collection. And this one is Farce. This one right here. So Farce from the, don't, uh, from the Oud Stars collection from Sergio. I absolutely love this one. Uh, Farce is oud, it has oud like Loatian oud, but again, it's not funky, it's not daring, but this is very opulent. Uh, so you have here uh, lavender, uh, citruses, amber, uh, resins, woods, like sandalwood, with this La, uh, La Ocean wood. Amazing, very complex, uber opulent and rich and expensive smelling scent, but it's still likable again because it doesn't have like funky edges although you have jasmine in here it has a slightly indolic quality but it's not challenging uh not for me at least but and this exudes power this really exudes power uh farce from zozhov great performance in here the sweet resin sweet edges in here i think really gives a very appealing touch and it gives depth to this perfume and i think this really is complex because of the citruses and the, the lavender and the fresh notes overall then you have the florals and then you have like the ambers and the woods and the oud amazing amazing perfume right here it's farce by zorro from the oud stars collection next fragrance this is from house of les indemodable and this one is rose de jamal this one right here this is currently my favorite rose perfume. This, this is really the most natural smelling rose that I ever smelled. So this is really like a red rose with geranium, with lavender and mint, especially mint, like lavender, rose, mint. These are the three main notes of Rose Jamal. And why I'm featuring this one here, because because of the rose, really. The rose, it's such a high quality rose. I mean, at least to my nose. I love rose. I have tons of rose perfumes and this one is for me the best in this genre. And it smells expensive. Like rose is a very expensive material. And and this one, the I mean, it, it pays a fantastic homage to rose. It's amazing. I, I absolutely love this. I can't distress it enough. The performance is also really good. This, this gives me like, gives a bit of vibes of Lyric Man from Amouage. And I love Lyric Man. Lyric Man is the reason why I love rose fragrances. This one has a bit of that. It has a bit of a Lyric Man feel into it because of the freshness, because it's a fresh rose. But but then as this develops the rose it's really it has body into it it's it's really it has oomph and has great performance this is another parfum but the, the performance is amazing i absolutely love this one if you love rose if you are searching for a rose fragrance that really smells expensive i mean check no more it's rose jamal is the one that you need by uh les indemodable the next fragrance, this is from House of Amouage. And of course, if we are talking about fragrances that smell expensive, we always need to mention an Amouage perfume. Now, I wanted to choose um, Jubilation 25, but I mean, because Jubilation 25 is usually the one that comes to mind when we are talking about fragrances that exude opulence and refinement. Um, we can also think of Interlude. So. Yeah, but those two are very popular, definitely very popular for a reason. I absolutely love those two. It's probably my two favorite Amouage fragrances, but I wanted to talk about one fragrance from this brand that it's very underrated, still available. And this one is Journeyman. 
this one right here journeyman beautiful beautiful bottle um so journeyman this is tobacco with leather with frankincense with like a piney quality and also very spicy so this opens up with a very spicy like very peppery balsamic uh notes and then this develops into a heavy frankincense with leather with tobacco it's amazing very dry very dark very mysterious and this one exudes this one really exudes opulence it's, it has a great performance great lasting power you will be noticed and this is really a type of perfume that's i mean if there's if people will smell you with a journeyman they will really think that you are incredibly rich at least in my opinion of course this is just my perception but i really feel that this fragrance smells expensive amazing 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 scent and it's very underrated um i mean it goes i think it's a bit overcast by jubilation 25 by interlude maybe even epic man but but and reflection man as well and overture man uh, but i think that, that journeyman definitely deserves more attention um it's i would say that this is really my top five favorite amouage uh, journeyman again tobacco leather spices incense with no sweet edges amazing scent journeyman by amouage exudes opulence and last but by no means least this is one of my latest additions to the collection from the house of Stefan Umber Lucas and I'm so proud to finally have this one in my collection because it's been forever on my wish list but I finally have it and th this one it, again it's very opulent very refined um, very regal it is Oida and this it, just look at the color of the look with this dark amber uh, color and really represents how this fragrance smells so Oida is an amber perfume it's amber with ambergris kind of like Ambra Aurea but this one I it's darker it's darker than Ambra Aurea you have Styrax in here you have tonka beans uh, although you also use you have vanilla but this one overall feels darker uh, than uh, Ambra Aurea this is amazing this is really resinous very rough raw uh amber absolutely love this one Th this and this is a bomb this really lasts the entire day um i absolutely love this one uh already one of my favorite ambers uh and and that this was on my wish list for quite some time for a reason uh this is quite expensive I managed to get this one for a fantastic price um, so yes I'm very uh, grateful for that uh, and Oida but it, it's it's a perfume that you should you should try especially if you love uh, ambers especially or if you're searching for like a very regal opulent perfume check this one out Oida by Stefano Berluca is definitely one of the best very best perfumes from uh, this brand one of the finest creations from Stefano Berlucas and also one of the best amber fragrances overall again very dark very opulent very resinous thick amber perfume Oida by Stefano Berlucas finishing this video guys I hope you enjoyed this video tell me in the comments down below what are your favorite expensive smelling fragrances what fragrances would you recommend me to try I would love to hear your suggestions. Uh, thank you so much for your ongoing support and see you in the next video. Take care, guys.